The ELCA and others, an introduction. There was a time when Lutherans would open their doors and their pews would be filled with just Lutherans. Baptist churches were for Baptists and Methodist churches for Methodists. But now, Lutherans are at Baptist churches and Baptists are at Methodist churches and non-denominationalists are spread out everywhere. Many have asked the question, what is the difference between this tradition and that tradition? Good question. The true answer is that each church is different, and each group has their own expression of their own tradition. But in order to answer this question for all of you, we will use some general truths about the differences between ELCA Lutheranism and other traditions. If you think we are wrong about a particular tradition, you're probably right. Before we begin, we should probably say something about the origins of the ELCA. In the beginning, God made... Wait, not that early. There was Luther in Germany, and Lutheranism spread everywhere, including, eventually, the United States. Most states had Lutherans, and they formed groups. Heard of the Missouri Synod? We'll get to them later. As time went on, more and more groups merged until there were three major Lutheran groups in America. The ALC, the LCA, and the Association of Evangelical Churches. They merged together in 1988 to form the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America which today has nearly 4 million members. There we are. But how do we compare to others? First we'll look at the Missouri Synod and how it lines up with the ELCA. The Missouri Synod was founded in 1847 and have always been their own group and body. Remember those early state-based Lutherans? There you go. The difference that is regularly noted between the two groups is that the Missouri Synod is more conservative and the ELCA is more progressive. But there's a lot more to it than that. Perhaps the main distinction is in how we read the Bible. The ELCA looks at it this way. Our Lutheran tradition from Martin Luther is that we can have a conversation with the Bible. We can look at the context behind a certain passage and see if that passage was meant as something for the community it was written or if it is meant for us today. We can wonder if something was figurative or if it had to happen exactly as written. We can wrestle with the text to find out what God is really saying to us. The Missouri Synod sees this as going against our founding Lutheran documents. The Bible is as the Bible is. And an example of this, women cannot become pastors in the Missouri Synod because certain Bible passages talk against women speaking in public. As it stands, Missouri Synod members can take communion at ELCA congregations, but not the other way around. Now for Lutheran and Baptist. This will be short. Lutherans will baptize infants, whereas Baptists will not. This stems from a difference in understanding baptism. Lutherans understand it as a grace-filled moment where God does all the work, whereas Baptists see it more as a public declaration of faith, which requires a child or young adult to understand the faith before undergoing the rite. There are other differences. But as you can see, their name is Baptist, and it all stops with baptism. Now Lutherans and Presbyterians. In essence, Lutherans come from Martin Luther, and Presbyterians come from John Calvin. These two theologians were nearly contemporaries, and greatly shaped the Protestant Reformation. Luther tended to focus on salvation through grace, while Calvin focused on God's glory. To Calvin, only the elect would be saved, while to Luther, Jesus died for all. Calvin held the idea of double predestination. You are, you are either damned to heaven or made for hell. There is nothing you can do about it. In Lutheranism, everyone can be saved by grace. To Calvin, baptism and communion are merely signs or symbols. But again, to Luther, communion and baptism are real, God-filled events where we find God fully present and active, not just symbols. And lastly, Lutherans and Catholics. There are obviously many other traditions, but this video can only go on for so long. The term Catholic simply means universal. The Catholic Church believes in transubstantiation. This is when a priest consecrates the bread and wine, changing them into the actual body and blood of Christ, while the presence remains the same. Luther believes this same thing, except we don't try to explain the mystery. The Catholic Church understands itself as the one holy Catholic apostolic church. The Lutheran Church follows the same creeds and professes the same thing, but we hold that that one church crosses across denominational lines. Created using Powtoon.